this interesting. A new study by the American Psychological Association says people with dark triad personalities are likely to engage in victimhood and virtue signaling to extract wealth, attention, and power from others. What are dark triad personalities? Narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. All personalities associated with malevolent traits. The study found that psychopaths are more likely to exploit the natural human urge to help those who are suffering by exaggerating or lying about their victimhood for self-gain. Researchers focused on people who make a public spectacle of their suffering, label themselves as victims, and demand compensation for their pain so they can take advantage of guilt-ridden people. Now, who does that remind you of? I will never be the man that this did not happen to. <laughs> NASCAR is trying to find out who carried out an abhorrent racist act. Officials found a noose in the garage of driver Bubba Wallace. A 12-year-old African-American girl says that her classmates called her hair ugly and nappy as they pinned her down and cut several of her dreadlocks. <laughs> Sabrina Belcher, running for office as South Carolina's first black mayor, arrested for allegedly faking her own kidnapping and beating. I could go on for hours listing all the hate hoaxes over the last few years, where individuals have faked attacks on themselves so they can play the victim to extract sympathy, power, and resources from an increasingly gullible public. Wilfred Riley, associate professor of political science at Kentucky State University, wrote a book in which he documented no less than 409 confirmed hate hoaxes. A political scientist found that fewer in one in three of 340 46 hate crime allegations were genuine. The epidemic of hate crime hoaxes in recent years, in addition to the general hysteria surrounding racism and bigotry, suggests that social media platforms have facilitated the opportunity for psychopaths to politically and financially weaponize their malignant schemes. From the APA study, the downside of this proclivity is that it can also lead people to be easily persuaded that all victim signals are accurate signals, particularly when they perceive the alleged victim as being a good person. When this occurs, well-meaning people might allocate their material and social resources to those who are neither victims nor virtuous, which necessarily diverts resources from those who are legitimately in need. As opposed to psychopaths, the study found that narcissists are more likely to engage in virtue signaling than victimhood because of their grandiose view of themselves. And as we know, virtue signaling is almost exclusively a behavior exhibited by leftists. Narcissists manipulate public behavior by feigning concern for left-wing political causes. By fabricating proactive behavior while privately doing nothing, or even the opposite. I'm so, so sorry. Lily, would you take an unaccompanied child into your own home? Is that 100%. something you've, you've considered? 100%. Yeah. Who, who wouldn't? <laughs> A 2018 study by the Journal of Environmental Psychology found that people who express the most alarm about climate change are less likely to be eco-friendly than global warming skeptics. A 2014 study by the Philanthropic Chronicle found that poorer conservatives in red states, who are obviously significantly less likely to virtue signal about charitable donations, are more generous than wealthy liberals in blue states. Charitable or virtuous acts are supposed to be humble gestures performed privately. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus Christ outlined this perfectly. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honoured by others. Virtue signalling isn't virtuous. It takes no effort, self-sacrifice, or resources whatsoever. If people are effusively over the top in broadcasting about what such a good person they are, Chances are they're the exact opposite. Chances are they're actually a dark triad. Virtue signaling is a substitute for thinking. It's mindless groupthink amplified by contrived mob outrage. The purpose of virtue signaling is to incentivize others to regurgitate glib leftist narratives and create giant echo chambers. A large component of virtue signaling is Twitter cancel culture. Joining the mob in a pile on against whoever's turn it is to be harassed and publicly shamed for a 10 year old tweet is itself a virtue signal. By juxtaposing themselves against the wickedness of the accused, they seek to obtain reflective virtue. By hoisting a metaphorical pitchfork and joining the unhinged rabble, they too 
can burn the witch. Which is interesting, because a not too dissimilar thing happened 320 years ago during the Salem witch trials. Just like Twitter cancel culture and deplatforming, in Salem, Massachusetts, the original witches to be accused were individuals who were disliked by the community. Malcontents, antisocials, weirdos, slaves. The first three women accused were, were in one form or another outcasts uh, in the village. Since few would rush to their defense, it was far easier to portray their motives as malevolent and impugn their character. But then as the moral panic grew, the finger of blame increasingly began to be pointed at more upstanding members of the community. Martha Corey was a full-fledged, full-covenant member of the Salem Village Church. If Martha Corey could be a witch, then anyone could be. How far has the needle moved on social media in terms of deplatforming, from affecting controversial or offensive figures to those considered more mainstream. Back in Salem, Massachusetts, as the hysterical contagion of the witch hunt spiraled out of control, it began to ensnare people who thought they were safe. In Salem, this came to a head when a former minister of the village, Reverend George Burroughs, was accused of being a witch. It came to a head when Martha Corey and Rebecca Nurse, two of the most benevolent members of the community and both devout church members, were accused of being witches. Nurse's sister, Sarah Cloyce, was also accused of being a witch. Why? Because she defended her sister. Is Twitter cancel culture that different? In a way, it's much worse. Not only will you become a target of the mob if you defend another target of the mob, but you can also become a target merely if you try to remain silent. Remember what they say, white silence is violence. But who was responsible for the Salem witch accusations? Who comprised the woke mob of the late 17th century? How did accusations alone become enough to confirm someone's guilt? The accusations in Salem were made by a group of young girls who had fits and claimed they were being physically attacked attacked by spectral figures. Unknown at the time, the girls were simply exhibiting all the classic signs of clinical hysteria. But when they repeated this theatrical display of thrashing around in the courtroom and then pointed out who was to blame, the girls were believed. Hashtag believe women. When the girls were told to face one of the accused, Sarah Good, who was standing a considerable distance away, they immediately fell into fits and acted out being tortured. She's pretty gory. You are now in the hands of authority. Tell me now why you hurt these persons. I do not. Who don't? <laughs> After they recovered, the girls claimed that Good Spectre had tormented them. This came to be known as spectral evidence and in many circumstances was considered satisfactory for ascertaining guilt. Now what does that remind you of? The leftist dogma that words, a non-physical abstraction, can cause physical harm. The notion that offensive speech is violence. Your speech could incite the same kind of violence. You, a faculty member at an American public university paid for by taxpayer dollars, are conflating speech with violence. Yes. Um, speech can be violent. So the Salem witch accusers engaged in six different types of behavior that are mirrored by virtue signaling Twitter cancel mobs today. One, feigning victimhood via over-the-top theatrical displays of fabricated suffering. Two, claiming a non-physical abstract, word, speech, or someone defending themselves, is itself a form of physical harassment and violence. Three, establishing the accusation alone is enough to confirm guilt. Four, the expectation of an immediate apology and recantation even if the accused has done nothing wrong. Five, discouraging others from defending the accused by making it clear this would incite the mob to target them next. And six, Mindless persecution fueled by contrived moral panic and mass hysteria. Just like putting the accused in the stocks 300 years ago, social media cancel culture is a form of public shaming. Social media cancel culture is a form of virtue signaling. And the Salem witch trials were the original cancel culture. In the era of Me Too, we've also seen how false accusations driven by moral panic can ensnare totally innocent people. But we've also observed how some of the biggest virtue signalers for Me Too turned out to be actual rapists and sexual abusers. Self-righteousness is always a marker for secret creepiness. The people yelling the loudest are usually hiding the most. If someone's Twitter feed is almost entirely retweets for woke causes, 
Watch out. If someone's primary motivation is them self-aggrandizing their own righteousness in order to prove that they're a better person than you, watch out. Am I saying that I'm better than you? I guess I'm going a little further than you are. Yeah, I'm fucking better than you, okay? Much better than you. If someone's entire social media output is one long painful virtue signal, you may be encountering a personality beholden to the dark triad. You may be encountering a narcissistic Machiavellian psychopath. <laughs>